Hey YouTube, my name is Eve the Weave. Like, share, and subscribe. Remember that video that I promised you last night that I was going to step on the neck of Carnell X? I'm going to step on his neck till he go to jail. I told y'all that, right? Because I believe that he's been swindling his sisters for years. So I go on his Facebook page and this is his post from his official page on Facebook. Greetings, my brothers and sisters. Already, I already told y'all about that brothers and sisters stuff. He's doing that to persuade y'all into believing him. Oh, you can trust me because I called you my brother or my sister. I pray this post finds you in the best of health. I would like to take the time to clear up why I decided to step away from the Britney barn regarding Malia Davis. My team and I have spent countless hours and days investigating and have spent expensive time talking to Miss Bowen in person and over the phone. I would like to share with you, my brothers and sisters, again, some facts of this case and the tragic and disappearance of young precious Malia Davis. From the moment that I got involved with the Malia Davis case, my sole purpose was to not protect any adult in this tragic circumstance. Whatever. My soul was my sole purpose was to find out what happened to Malia Davis and where she is. In our my team investigation we learned a lot of disturbing facts about this case. One, Brittany confessed to me that she did not she she did help cover up physical abuse of the hands of Malia Davis's stepdad, Darian Vince. First of all, I don't think they marry. He shouldn't even be called a stepdad. I'm sorry. Marry her first, and then you might be her stepdad. You're not her step. He's not her stepdad. He was just her mother's boyfriend. How about that? Um. Let's see. Two. Brittany admitted to me that Darian had beaten Malia s several times with a belt that she wanted to take her to the emergency room, but Darian. The so-called stepdad told her that they couldn't because he was not going to take the fall for it. Malia, meaning Malia Davis's abuse. He's not taking a fall for it. Three, Brittany admitted to me that the day she fell, the day she left for the airport, she discovered that Darian was spend, sending new photos of his private parts to another man that while she was at the airport she confronted him with the information I said to Brittany how could you leave your daughter with a man that you know has physically abused your child bathed your daughter without your permission secretly brought her home from daycare without your knowledge and sending new photos of himself to another man and you still still left Malia with Darian to go out of town her answer made me sick to my stomach I learned that Brittany was communicating with Darian through his brother by sending messages to give to him while he's in jail the the moment that I asked her the asked her a question about her believe wow this is this is crazy she believed really what happened she responded with a disturb with her response with what so disturbing that it cringe what the hell I immediately went and met with the investigators at the highest level of this case to share with them everything that I've learned and I 
And at this point, I decided to step away. Because I'm trying to tell you. I was fine until I got to all that. I'm like, did he read this before he? I don't know. There's a lot more that I cannot share with you right now. But I have already done so done so with investigating. See? I have already done so with this investigation. Like... What, what the hell is so? Why is that there? Is it, and y'all sitting up there saying, I can't read the post? That one person in the comment on the K. Michelle video? Whatever. And then he goes on to say that he um, basically gave all of his information. He gave all of his information. Oh, no, we're not about to do this. He gave all of his information to a pro to the um prosecutor that's on the case, the district attorney or whatever. Uh, my thing is, my thing is, okay, you saying that you told her that you 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 saying that she told you about the allegations of her knowing the acknowledgement of her knowing that the boyfriend was beating her daughter and bathing her daughter and this and this and that. Right? Right. This is not really why you're leaving the case. Okay? Oh, because there's so much more. He wants to now shift the buck on her. Meaning, remember when I told you about the TV interview? With the TV news, with the, with, well, I think it was Fox 26. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I think it was Fox 26. And I have it in my other video, but I'm about to pull it up right Again, here. Matter of fact, we, we thank you for uh, coming. This is by. it right here. Uh, this is. Um, I'd asked you earlier about Malia's birthday, February 6th. Um, tell me about the day she was born. The day she was born, um, I had to have a C-section with her, and I just remember being in the hospital by myself. Other family members not there, or wow? Do you remember holding her for the first time? The feeling was amazing because I've always wanted a little girl. I've always wanted a little girl, and to know that I finally had her, it meant everything to me. Mm. Tell me about Malia. What's the matter? Malia, she was, she was friendly. I mean, she would go up to anybody. I mean, anybody on the street, she would. Hey, hi, you know, she she would always speak. I'ma speed this up a and little bit. A beautiful I'ma speed it up a little bit. But do y'all look at his demeanor when he's sitting next to her in the chair? Look at his demeanor. Was announced missing. There've been stories every day. Do you watch the stories? No. I can't. I don't watch TV. I don't watch the news. Social media? No. Too painful. It is. It is. My friends, they do, but I don't. How's your mom doing? She spoke the, the first time we heard from you. She, I remember her speaking at the uh, news conference. Look. <clears throat> Why he had to touch her right there? Because he asked about the mother. He touched her for what reason? Damn it. He touched her for what reason, though? That's all I want to know. Why he had to touch her? Yeah, I messed she up. Spoke the, the first time we heard from you, she, I remember her speaking at the uh, news conference. Look, why he got to touch her? What are you touching her for? Like he consoling her. But he's not. I haven't talked to her. Really? Why is that? I don't know. 
it's like ever since I don't know she she doesn't want to be in the media and I'm okay with pause she said that she does not want to be in the media now her mother spoke out about the granddaughter way before Britney spoke out. So how you going to say your mother don't want to be in the media? I'm going to try not to make this a long video, but like I told y'all, I'm here to step on his fat ass neck sitting next to her because I'm not understanding why. I, my thing is, though, this is what I want to know. Being that he say he's stepping away from the case and all this and all of that. Now, in the wake of him saying he stepped away from the case, y'all, let me just inform y'all, Brittany came out and said the same thing that the other ladies were saying in my last night's video. I'm going to bring that up too. She said that he misrepresented himself. So, if the other ladies are saying it, now she's the fourth or whatever person that we've seen actually say it. Because on that other video that I had up last night, it was only three people in that, three ladies, black, African-American females, that had three different cases going on that said the same thing about this young man, Carnell. Now, Brittany's saying the same thing that they're saying. He misrepresented himself. Now, I'm wondering, how did she realize? My thing is, why nobody not doing their Google searches on me? I, I, that's the part I don't know. You don't, I want to know if Britney paid him money. Because see, he didn't say that, nothing about being paid in his post when he said he's stepping down from the case. But those other ladies already indicated that they paid him. One lady paid him twice. She paid him over $100,000 by herself alone. So my thing is, though, did Britney pay him too? Because she ain't come out and say she paid him yet. Okay? Was he clout chasing? And this case got a little bit too big. And then, boom, here come the documentary with the three females talking about him and how they going to sue him and all that stuff. Let's keep going, though. I see. But are you, there's something going on between you two where you, you're not, you're not talking, which seems surprising given what you're going through. You want to talk to your mom. I want to talk to her. It's too much for her. Let's, let's go back <clears throat> to the beginning of this story. Um, you left town to go to your dad's memorial service. It's been reported you had an argument with Darian Vince before you left town. What was that about? Look at his demeanor. I'll speak to that. Okay, I'll speak to that. I'll speak to that. They were having some relationship issues because she discovered that there was issues of infidelity and that he had been entertaining others in a very inappropriate manner when you're in a committed relationship with someone else. And so she didn't confront him about that until she was already gone at the airport. So at the airport, did you call him and talk to him about this or he, he took you to the airport? No, my friend took me to the airport. And did you call him? No, I texted him. What did you say? Those text messages have been given to authorities. And so we don't want to rehash that right now mm -hmm. because all of that's going to come out in a trial someday soon. Let me pause that again. There's going to be a lot of pausing going on because I already went through this TV interview in my last video. I'm just here to break it down as the new facts come in. 
as I'm getting them, I'm giving them. Yo, now, I'm new texts have came out with her talking to, I think, her sister or some family member about how she needs to locate him. All types of stuff. I'm going to go get those text messages while we looking at this. But my thing is, like he said in his post, if you knew that that man was texting another man private parts, why would you then leave your child with this man? Then not on top of that, you left your child with this man knowing and you already admitted in this interview that he beats on your child. So could you please tell me why you left your child with this man? Okay. But all of that exchange between the two of them about the infidelity, the inappropriate pictures of a sexual nature that she had discovered him sending to someone else. Um, that's going to come up, but all of that was provided after I got involved mm -hmm. to investigators that they needed to see those things. Mm -hmm. Because to me, I believe it spoke to motive, in my opinion, based on what we have learned and what we discovered and what we saw. Those pictures had the potential to expose a hidden secret of his about his sexuality. And once she confronted him with that, while being at the airport, you know, I, I believe that that speaks to the motive behind this entire... Pause again. Because my thing is, if you caught him this one time, happened so you caught him as you was going out of town. So you trying to tell me, if he was so comfortable with doing it, knowing that y'all lived together, he wasn't caught before, you didn't know that he was bisexual, what are you saying? Because I'm starting to think that those text messages don't exist. Reason why I'm saying that is because other text messages with other family members has came out the woodwork all of a sudden. But those text messages from her phone to his phone, wouldn't you want to give those up to the police? Wouldn't you want to leak those real quick? Because you're leaking everything else. So we're not going to never see those text messages between you and him stating that he's sending news and this and this and that and the third. Bullshit. I call bullshit. I am calling bullshit. I've been calling bullshit, and I'm going to keep calling it because I'm not in that standing. Tragedy of Malia being missing. So, Brittany, let me ask you, when you confronted him by text, how did he respond? He responded in text messages also. But Why he ain't like You notice how the interviewer said, Brittany, so when you text him and asked him about it, why didn't Carnell X let Brittany answer the question? Why he ain't let her answer the question? He never let her answer that question. And I spoke about that in my last video that I did about this interview right here. I did one video specifically about this video. And this is when I knew he was fraud. Only then she wouldn't answer. I see. So was he angry? Upset? Upset, not upset. Not angry. Not angry, but upset that she would not respond, that she wouldn't communicate with him. Mm. Were you comfortable leaving town with your children with Darian Bits? Yes, because in my mind, whatever we had going on had nothing to do with the children. When you came back. How could she say it has nothing to do with the children, people? How could she possibly say it has nothing to do with the children if, if you already stated that he abuses her? So why, again, the question arises again and again and again. Why would you leave your child with this man? We heard the story from Darian about 
kidnapping. He was attacked. He and one of the other children were left alone. He goes to the hospital the next day. The story, quite frankly, sounded so far-fetched. A lot of people did not believe it. Did you believe it? I wanted to believe it. Why? Believing that story is, I mean, I would rather hear that somebody took my child than to know that somebody that I had a home with could have possibly did something. And I think it's, I think it cheapens the truth to even call it a story. What we all were told was nothing more than a concocted lie to cover up the real circumstances of the disappearance of Malia. So I don't think that we should give him the benefit of the doubt or even the dignity to call what he said a story. It's a lie. When you got back, he explains what happens. What else did he tell you? When what? I saw him, when he called, when, when you got home. When I got home that yes. Sunday? Yes. He never really said anything to me. He just kept saying, I'm sorry. He said he was sorry. I'm sorry. Did he I tried to protect her. That's all he told me. He didn't really tell mm -hmm. me much. The same things that I heard going around us, he didn't tell me anything. So did you have suspicions about, did you have a bad feeling? It was always in the back of my mind, yes. What was in the back of your mind? That something could have possibly happened. And that maybe he was involved? Possibly. Did you notice anything different about the apartment? No. Nothing seemed it out was, of place? It, nothing... Everything, everything was cleaned, everything was put away, but that's normal. That's how we clean, you know, and... I'm going to pause that video right there, because like I said, I just want y'all to look at his demeanor, because this video is really about him. Because I'm not going to just not stay on just his neck. No! We on Britney neck too. Because you don't brought the fraud into our lives. To the world's lives. And he's been frauding forever. So. We're going to look at this. Right here. Let me see. It's um... Fox 26. Hey, what up, family? It's Cash Me Out. I am Queen Supreme, and I'm back at you again for another video. Thank you, Queen on Supreme. The Davis situation. Now, shout out you know, the Queen Supreme. Two um, interviews with, um, you know, Brittany and Quanell, and I definitely am going to leave my commentary. But, um, you know, with work and stuff like that, um, and I do want to study. I want to watch those interviews a couple of times before I come through because. I didn't. Walmart said when customers anonymously pay off others' layaway items, we're reminded of the amazing things people will do to support each other. We're proud to be a small part of these random acts of kindness. And these random acts now center stage in the Bowens Christmas this year. Bowen says she hopes her mysterious benefactor is watching. Thank you so much. If I could give you a hug right now, I just appreciate you, you know. As you can see, Royal Family, that was Brittany Bowens on Fox 26, and this interview did take place December of 2015. Malia was one, and her big brother was two at this time. Now, I think it's important to remember that... Uh, now, that was a, a interview. She got a secret Santa for 2015. This girl has been in the news a lot. And this is what I'm this 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 is what baffles my mind. This is what baffles my mind. She's been in the news a lot. 
She has multiple ACS cases. Oh, what I do? Let's watch this one right here. And this is about Carnell X. I don't even know why. Hi, my name is Latarsha Smith, and I'm from Houston, Texas, and I am a victim of Cornell X. Hi, my name is Leslie Bradley, and I'm coming here because I am, too, another victim of Cornell X and his fraud. Hi, my name is Mary Wilkes. I was born in Lake Charles, Louisiana. I moved to Beaumont, Texas in January of 1987. I've been residing in Texas for over 30 years, and I'm a victim of Cornell X. I had seek Cornell on behalf of my husband, Charlie Bradley, because we wanted media attention. We didn't need representation or anything like that. We wanted media attention, and he told me that he would charge me $3,500 to help get media attention, so he was selling Fox 26 News media to us to be able to be represented, or not represented, excuse me, but to be interviewed. I reached out to him. Uh... Now, you heard what she just said? Didn't he just put Britney on Fox 26? So he sold everybody on getting an interview with Fox 26, basically. That's what it seems. Thank you, Queen Supreme, for that clip of the video with her having a secret Santa. I'm not going to take out that clip because it's already in here, and I'm not editing shit. I'm the queen of not editing nothing. So, I'm going to just use that in another video when I talk about Britney ass. Yeah, we're going to stay on there next. But, being that this one is about Carnell X, I'm going to replay this like I did last night because my thing is, and everybody now that everybody that this is going viral, everybody is saying, why didn't they Google him? And it's the truth. Why didn't they Google him? Nobody Google. Nobody felt like, oh, I'm going to put this money in his hands. Everybody put money. All three of these women on this video right here put money in his hands. And nobody says, well, let me do my Google research on him. It's what a legal matter, thinking that he could help me. So when I called him and asked, explain the story, the situation, and asked him, you know, could he help me? He told me yes, but he could not do it for free. So I basically was like, okay, how much is it going to cost? And he told me uh, $3,500. When I first contacted Cornell X, it was in December of 2015. I assumed he was a lawyer, so I texted him and then I emailed him and he called me right back. So when we got on the phone and we were talking, so I asked Mr. Cornell if he was a lawyer and he told me yes. And I told him it was a custody case in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Could he help me? And he told me yes. So he said the first thing that he would need from me would be $7,500. And how soon could I get it? So I said, okay. Uh, can you meet with me to kind of, you know, explain what, you know, you would be doing? So he came over the next day to my house and spoke with me and my mom. And he was basically saying that because the type of uh, crime that my brother was involved in is like an organized crime ring where it was other people involved. So he was saying that he was going to go and speak to the other inmates and ask them how they knew my brother to try to kind of, you know, see if they would be lying about something. So I, I told him, give me a couple of days and I would get back to him. So I wrote him a check in December of 2015 for $7,500 for a custody case in Lake Charles, Louisiana. No, he said, give me $1,000 first and then I will go talk to your husband. And then I said, well, you go talk to my husband first and then we'll see. And so I said, okay, I said, well, do I, do I still need to get a lawyer or just you would be sufficient? And he said, no, no. He said, if your brother has a court appointed lawyer, we'll basically get rid of him. And because I know, you know, some of the Fed lawyers, uh, court appointed lawyers are the best lawyers. And I'm like, okay, you know. So he brought out this contract for me to sign 
And uh, I was saying, okay, well, I don't have the money today. And he said, okay, well, we're not going to sign the contract just at this moment. When you get the money, then we'll sign, then we'll let you sign it. And then we started talking about the case, and he told me that he could help me. He could help me get my child back. And I told him how long the case had been going on, and he said that it was okay that he would be able to represent me in Lake Charles. So the first time we got together, it was supposed to be March 8th at this foundation house. So he went to the jail, he went to go meet him, Charlie Bradley. And the reason why we wanted media attention was because the DNA evidence came back that said it was not my husband. So from, the, um, from his crimes that they are charging him with. So the whole point of even dealing with Cornell was because he's out in the media and all we wanted was an interview at, since my husband was in the Harris County Jail. So the next day, I called him up that morning and I said, okay, where do you uh, want me to meet you to give you the money, the 3500 And he said, okay, I'm in the Woodlands. You want to meet me at Starbucks? And I said, okay, that's fine. So I went to the bank, got the money, and uh, me and my mom met him at Starbucks and uh, gave him the 3500 We wasn't there for about five minutes. So he said, okay, I'll be contacting you, you know, to let you know, you know, what the next step is. So like, this was a Saturday. So like when Monday came, I texted him and I said, okay, so when are you going to visit my brother? And he said, well, okay, because it's the feds, you know, you have to get approval. So I said, okay, because my brother is going to know when you come to see him. So like two days went by and I called him and he didn't answer. And then he texts me back. And I said, well, my brother wants to know when you come to see him. And he said, well, I'm still waiting on approval. He ended up telling me that he was going to charge me $3,500. So I then got a cashier's check to give him $3,500 to get this um, interview for my husband. Because he wanted to tell his story. Because he doesn't fit the description and he didn't have any witnesses testify against him or anything so therefore we wanted to bring it to the media and let people know um about my husband being incarcerated wrongly and they didn't have any hardcore evidence to keep him there so we figured okay well if we can get the media attention maybe it'll help us since the dna came back and then they said they had a fingerprint but they now I went through this whole video we shot last night, so we're not going to watch it all the way until the end. Long story short, he been booze with these three women too. And like I said, it makes no sense. It's to the point where I think the Black Panthers are involved. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Let me see if I can get it to that part where the Black Panther speaks out against him. Hold on one minute. People's New Black Panther Party. You know, we out here today talking about Brother Cornell, and first I feel it, that I need to address the community in Houston, Texas. I've been in this community for four years now working. I gave an oath to serve, this, serve the public and serve the community. This, this was something that was very hard for us to do. This was not a decision that was easily made. This decision to come out against Cornell was made with very wise counsel. I want everybody to know that first of all, what we did, we went to this brother as men are supposed to do and as brothers are supposed to do, and we asked his brother to do the right thing because we had some problems. The brother agreed to pay one sister after we had a conversation with him, uh, and after that, uh, the brother P agreed to pay five more people. Uh, Cornell later on went back on his agreement to pay the people, and that's when we basically had no decision, no choice, but to come out on the brother and let the public know what was going on with this brother. So this is directly to uh, Cornell X. You know, us having conversations, us talking, you know, that's over with now. We tried that. Brother, I'm a, you have two options at this point. Either you can humble yourself or you can walk in your ego. If you're willing to humble yourself and you're willing to confess your sins before the people, and come out here and say you did wrong and you willing to pay these people their money back. I will stand right here with you just as I stand against you and oppose you 
I will stand right here with you, brother, while you apologize, and I will stand with you, and we will forgive you, brother, for doing the right thing, because all of us make mistakes, and you can be redeemed. But, brother, if you choose to walk in your ego, and you choose to act like this is not happening, or you act like this is going to go away, I'm letting you know right now, you're making a very bad decision, because we're going to follow this thing all the way through to the end. This is supposed to be about the liberation for our people. This is not supposed to be about us out here stealing and, and, and uh, fulfilling a bad name for the Panther Party. What you did to this little sister that I just talked to a little while ago by telling her, promising her, you gonna get her grandfather out of jail. And you gave her a pinky square, brother. But to never to pick up the phone and answer the phone call again for these people, that was low down, that was dirty, and it's not gonna be tolerated. Whatever God you praying to, I don't have no kind of understanding that if for that at all whatsoever. And whatever God you praying to, your God ain't even no good then. What? Now, he said that Carnell gave the little girl a pinky square. Like, who gives a child a pinky swear? Who does that? Who gives a pinky square, period? You know, when you, you know, when you do the pinky swear, like, you know, let's pinky swear. Pinky swears is usually legit. Like, they usually, like, you know, they, 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 I never heard of a grown man breaking a pinky swear to a child on some type of a point and matter of this altitude. Like, you know you the scum of the fucking earth when you break a pinky swear to a little girl who family you already took money from and you already knew that you wasn't gonna do right by them i'm not understanding i'm with the black panthers i'm not understanding why would you do that why would you do that you a grown whole ass man what I'm doing is going home and I'm praying to the God of righteousness that this be revealed today about what's going on. And I want my God to deliver you into my hands if you're not willing to do the right thing. And I guarantee that this ain't something you can sweep up under no rug. This is not something that's going anywhere. And we're serious about what we're doing. And the streets have already turned against you, brother. And you already know that. When you try to go to different places, the people are going to come out against you and boo you everywhere you're going. Yo, he we, ain't lying. That they know you from. He ain't lying. That this has always been a plan of yours. Is this? If this has always been a plan of yours, you had to know one day that this was going to come to an end. And your day has come. This is not a game. This is not a joke. This is real life. And we serious about this, man. And his day has come to an end. I'm going to tell you that right now. Because he was so busy chasing clout with the Maria, with the um, Malia Davis case, with the little girl. He was so busy chasing clout. Once he realized this video right here dropped, all of a sudden now he got to back out. Throw heat on Malia Davis, for we, Malia Davis, mother Brittany, for we can look at her more and not look at him. As a whole fraud that took all these people money. So let me just draw the attention all for me onto her. But honey, we gonna stay on your neck. Houston, Channel 2's Brandon Walker was there for that. Brandon, these folks are claiming that they paid Quanell X, in some cases, a great deal of money and didn't get the help he had promised them. Yeah, and they all have similar stories, Bill. One woman had two contracts with her, each for $7,500 money. She said she paid Quan LX in total. She claimed she paid him $17,500. All of that money, she says, for nothing. Cornell has been stealing money from me and a lot of other people. Quan LX doesn't bite his tongue, says he's a voice for the voiceless, but if you ask Veronica Cooper... He's just another con man. He's no more than a swindler. Tough words from Cooper and a group of about a half dozen accusing Quan LX of being a textbook example of greed and mistrust. It's like, you see me on TV, I'm always doing something. I'm always here, I'm always there. I'm for the people. What people? Leslie Bradley says she paid Quan LX $3,500 to help get media attention for her husband, who she says was wrongly convicted. Same story for Charles Carter, whose daughter is behind bars on an aggravated robbery charge. I called him over and over and over again. Every time I speak with him, 
He did the bar deal with the judge and see what he can do. And nothing is ever done, Carter claims. What happens next is unclear. Some have promised to sue Quan LX. Others just want their money back. I like for them to get reimbursed for the money that was spent. And I like for Quan to quit lying to people and representing himself as an activist for the black community. He is not. He's just another con man. Yeah, so we reached out to Quan LX for comment, but he told us that he couldn't speak after speaking to his attorney because some people said that they may uh, file a lawsuit. But he did release a statement when allegations were brought against him uh, recently before this, saying in part, quote, We welcome any member of the human family to come to us for help, but please tell us the truth and the whole story. Often people come to us for help saying it's a race issue that caused the problem, but when we investigate, we find out race had nothing to do with it. Just because you retain my my office for work doesn't mean that we will lie for you pause so now you blaming the families for hiring you because they blaming you for swindling them of their money so basically what you're trying to say is the families never gave you the whole story but wait, my brother. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna use your words, Cornell, against you, my brother. Didn't you say you had a whole investigation team? So, if you got a whole investigation team, right? Here we go. When you realize these stories, 